Hey guys, so I chose to do my theater project on feminist theater. Very self-explanatory, but a lot of cool details behind it. So feminist or feminism is an advocate of women's rights on the basis of the equality of the sexes um, or a person who supports feminism, which is exactly what I just said. Um, we should all know what theater is because we've had this whole semester on it. Um, but just in case you don't, theater is the activity or profession of the acting and producing, directing, or writing plays inside a theater or an outdoor space. The Minnes Theater, when you combine both of them, it literally says its name for itself. It is the theater that works to highlight women's social and political struggles. So we are just getting our voice out there but on a stage and I think that is so amazing um so I did not know this prior to this research but feminist feminism comes in waves and there have been four waves to this day they started um in the early 20th century and they are now still present um and I'm hoping there's like a fifth wave because I'm all about it and I love it um so feminist theater was born in the second wave which is known as the women's liberation movement um, and from the beginning, it's like, um, it started with women's, women's suffrage, political, not much political, but a little bit of political. Um, and then it just goes up into like in today's world where we're now voicing our, our freedom for sexual harassment, assault, so many different things. Arising in India in the 1970s is when, um, feminist theater actually took off. Um, it has since found its voice, um, currently still not a lot of theaters, but it is still out there in the theater world. So, like I said, prior to the seventies, it all started in the seventies, but prior to that, um, women would still write plays and they would be behind the scenes, I guess, or, you know, in the paperwork part. Um, but a lot of them were not able to perform in the plays. Um, so when this movement arose, certain ideas would be portrayed in the plays um, as things that we as women struggle with or go through. So widowed marriages, abortion, identities that are more privileged than others, um, multiple different things that should be heard. And I feel like a theater space is so perfect for that because you can put it all out there and no one knows you. No one's going to judge you. You can make your voice be heard. The main purpose um, for feminist theater is to advocate for the equality of the sexes. The main intent is to disrupt the male's perspective. Um, we as women have the power to speak for ourselves and theater is one healthy way to do so. Because like I said earlier, you can speak, you can act, you can have all these feelings on the stage and people are listening, they're there, they're watching. So you're getting it out to a mass of people at one time. Um, not only does feminism Dis, or theater, feminist theater, does it discuss the rights of women, but it encourages women to join the theater world. Um, I think that's awesome. Um, I feel like a lot of women are in theater, like more so in the theater involvement, but a lot of them aren't in like the feminist theater. They're just a theater person there in productions. Um, and then back, like when it all first started in the 70s, um, they would have workshops and meeting for women to come to so that they could learn more about the theater world. They just wanted to get women involved however they could. Um, theater, feminist theater focuses on looking at gender roles. Often they do that in a mocking form, um, telling stories that have been ignored um, for like historical figures. So maybe a woman did something amazing and no one ever knew about it because they didn't want to put that out there at the time because women weren't where it was at. It was all the men doing the great things. Um, a lot of them tell unjust stories of women who have been through the ringer and they deserve to have their voice heard now, especially, um, and critiquing authorities of power that keep women oppressed. So saying that Bob over here should not hold this role in society because he is keeping our freedom as women hit under the rug, basically. Um, a big face behind feminist theater is going to be Cheryl, Carolyn, however you pronounce it, Churchill. Cheryl Churchill, I believe. Um, she was born in London, England in 1938, and she's a bit a British playwright um, dealing with feminism, power abuse, and sexual politics. Um, she has made many productions. The one that I found 
awesome was Top Girls. She produced that in 1982. It was a famous play dealing with women losing their humanity in order to obtain power in a primarily male environment. Um, like I said, she has so, so, so many productions, but Top Girls was one that I really liked. Um, there is a, a theater located in New York that is only a feminist theater. Two women are actually the owners of this theater, Ashley and Elizabeth. Their mission is feminist, feminist in nature. Um, and I believe that only women work there. Um, I could be wrong, but I believe I'm right. Um, only women work there and this theater like itself is a feminist theater. We don't have one of those in Memphis. Um, I don't think there's even that many like around the world. Um, but this is one that I found that looked amazing and it really intrigued like the inner woman in me when I was just scrolling through their site. It, it was very touching. Um, some feminist theater productions. Saying feminist over and over again gets very rough. Um, a Raisin in the Sun. Lorraine Hansberry was the first black female to have her play performed on Broadway, and she received a New York Critics Circle Award for it. So that in itself is amazing for women, for black community, for everything. Um, a Raisin in the Sun discusses abortion and marital oppression. Um, so they are, you know, telling things that happen to women daily. Um, and it's in a play. So people are watching it and they're getting to see it firsthand experience instead of just hearing about it and then having judgment on it. Um, they're actually seeing this out there. They're watching it. They're seeing it like what's going on and how it's working and how the woman feels and why she has to do this. It, it's a great, great production. Um, it has strong feminist tones and the characters defy stereotypical boxes that women are put in. So they are just showing people that, hey, we are not going to be like this. We can get out of this. This is what you're doing to us. Um, another one is going to be in the next room. Um, this play discusses the beginning of the first vibrator. Um, it talks about sexual oppression of women in the Victorian area. Uh, basically, I guess just more like, I feel like a lot of people, like when they hear the word sex, they think men. And that is totally not the case. Like we, just as much as men, deserve to do as we please in sexual activities and how we feel. Um, it's not just for a man. In today's world, Lady Gaga, that girl's where it's at, okay? She says, I am a woman of theater. I'm a librarian of theater. And I love all different kinds of music and all different kinds of expression. She is definitely big in the feminist world, and I think that's awesome to have someone who a lot of people um, like our age look up to uh, because she is setting the bar high for the feminist aspect slash level, whatever you would like to call it. Another one is Michelle Obama. Love that lady. <clears throat> she says, strong men, men who are truly role models, don't need to put down women to make themselves feel powerful. And man, that is true. That is very true. So I hope you have learned a lot. A couple takeaways. Um, feminist theater has grown so much since the seventies, but I still feel like today it is not a normal thing per se. Um, at least not in like this area of the U S. Um, the theater is only one place to support feminism. Um, while it is beautiful, we still have to keep fighting, um, in order to maybe have that fifth wave of, of feminism so we can, keep working and making ourselves just as great as the man. Hope y'all enjoyed.